Dead Space 1 came out in 2008. It scored 8.7 out of 10 on IGN, 9 out of 10 on GameSpot, and 89% on Metacritic. Dead Space's debut game sold over 2 million copies worldwide. Critics praised its atmosphere, gameplay, and sound design. It rocked the world of survival horror games and established itself as a contender with other known brands such as Resident Evil and Silent Hill. Dead Space 2 came out three years later to critical acclaim. IGN gave it a 9 out of 10, it scored 90% on Metacritic and reviewed well overall. It was seen as an improvement on the first game with graphics, gameplay elements and other features taken to the next level. It went on to sell 4 million copies, making it one of the most successful games of that year and the most successful horror game at that time. Dead Space is a franchise that established itself not just as a competitor to the other horror games, but it was leading the way. Fast forward to 2013 and the third game arrived with much anticipation. In the United States, Dead Space 3 was the top selling game in February. In the United Kingdom, Dead Space 3 peaked at number one on the sales chart, but sales were 20% less than that of Dead Space 2. IGN gave it a 7.8 out of 10, and Metacritic gave it a 78%. After this, there would be no more Dead Space. So, how the heck did this happen? How does a game come in, dominate the market, grow a strong committed fan base, and then suddenly drop off and cease to exist? Was Dead Space 3 that bad? In this video, I'll try to unravel the mystery and figure out what happened. Quick side note, I'm a new channel, so please consider subscribing if you enjoy this video. It would mean a lot. Anyway, back to it. The most important place to start is with what made the franchise so successful prior to Dead Space 3's release. Dead Space is a science fiction, survival horror, third person shooter developed by Visceral Games and published by Electronic Arts. The game was released in North America on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 in October of 2008. The game follows the story of Isaac Clarke, an engineer assigned on a rescue mission to investigate the starship USG Ishimura, which has now become infested with monstrous zombie-like alien creatures known as necromorphs. At this point, Resident Evil 4 had been out for a few years, and it had shown how an over-the-shoulder third-person shooter could create an exceptional horror experience. Dead Space took its own spin on this, mainly in the fact that you could move while shooting, but they also added a lot of features that differed from other games in that genre. They added a unique gameplay element, such as stasis, which would allow you to slow enemies down for a few seconds, or kinesis, which allowed you to lift and throw objects. A health bar was displayed on your back. There was many things, but what really made this game its own was the setting and the enemies. Now, 99% of time in shooting games, you shoot for the head. Dead Space introduced the now infamous Cut Off Their Limbs. Necromorphs were not slow moving zombies, they were grotesque mutilated versions of humans possessed by aliens and they moved quick. Trying to aim for an enemy's arms and legs while they're sprinting full pelt at you introduced a new element of fear that we didn't know existed. It was simple but it was so effective. They also took the environment up to space, using an abandoned planet cracker ship as the majority of the game's arena. Just yourself isolated, walk in the dark halls. Something had happened, something horrific, and we, the player, are there to experience the aftermath and piece together the history of what had happened. It was dark, it was tense, a thrilling experience, and it had not just a great main plotline, but an overarching story as well. It used audio so effectively, as you heard distant screams, banging from vents where enemies lay in wait, and the noises that the necromorphs make instill a fear that no matter how many times you've heard it, it still gets to you. Psychological horror was also introduced, as our main character would hear voices, see things that weren't real, and, no spoiler, let's just say there's a plot twist which ties all that together. Provided with limited ammo, health packs, inventory space, Dead Space made you ration your bullets and created an additional fear of having to make every single shot count and every health boost as well. You never knew when you needed it the most. The game was a survival horror masterpiece. Three years later and in steps Dead Space 2. This time, the action takes place on The Sprawl, a space station built by the Earth government. Theoretically, just a bigger ship. 
The difference is that this game was the fact that the horror was unfolding before our own eyes. Rather than arriving late to the party, we were there to witness it as the main guest. The story added more dialogue, the graphics were improved, zero grav set pieces were cleaned up, essentially they copied the exact same formula, just improved it in every way. They had a formula and it worked. Now, let's move on to today's topic, Dead Space 3. Released three years later, fans waited with anticipation. The hype was real, the marketing budget was huge, everything looked to indicate a potential masterpiece. Or so we thought. Once you switched on Dead Space 3, the new elements that they had added to the formula were readily apparent. In past games, you would unlock stronger weapons as you progressed, each using a different type of ammo. This, tied along with very limited inventory space, encouraged experimentation and improvisation. The limited ammo made the horror all that more, more serious when you were down to just a few bullets and you're screaming out loud each time a bullet misses the fast approaching target. Dead Space 3 on the other hand created a weapon crafting system which was not very well explained, difficult to navigate and generally obsolete at a certain point in the game. Not only did this give you more powerful guns early in the game, but every weapon also took one uniform generic type of ammo. Inventory space was increased and bullets, health packs, key items would drop so frequently that you never needed to worry about running low. The need to conserve bullets and make every shot count disappeared, and as a result, so did a lot of the horror elements. Rather than a survival horror game, the third installment played more like an action shooter. Hordes of enemies would appear and you would mow them down with hordes of ammo. They also introduced action sequences such as enemies that had guns, the ability to crouch behind walls and a button to throw grenades, very similar to another game of that time, Gears of War. The story was completely different and it seemed a bit more cheesy with a love triangle forming and the plotline continued to shift and it was difficult to keep track of. Side stories or side quests were introduced as well. The side stories would appear on your main campaign pathway, and you would have the option to explore that side quest or not. Continue going straight to progress, or cut a quick left and do the side story before going on to continue. The side stories felt completely outside of the main plot. It used a lot of reused assets, and it seemed more of a distraction than part of the overarching story. In fact, they had zero impact on the story. They were also quite immersion breaking since you had to do them then or never. In fact, in one part of the game during the final moments you are chasing an enemy and you need to catch up with him quickly. There's a whole sequence of you chasing this guy trying to stop him from getting somewhere before you. Time is of the essence and then one of these side quests pops up. So, if you decide to go and do this completely unrelated side quest for an hour, in reality the bad guy would get away. But not to worry. The rest of the story will pause and wait for you until you finish that up. Maybe it wasn't so much the concept, but more the execution that felt wrong. Neither of the first two games had any optional side quests and adding these was a risk which did not appear to pay off as much as they may have wanted. These changes are very contradictory to the formula that made the game so successful in the first place, but yet, I haven't mentioned the biggest defender, co-op. Up until this point, all the games have been single player. You against the world, you alone, walking through these horrific environments, outnumbered against all odds. You could hear a pin drop as you slowly snuck around corners with heart pounding anxiety. Dead Space 3 decided to give you a co-op friend. Having another person online by your side defeated the whole purpose of what a survival horror game is and turned it into more of an action title where you and your buddy go around mowing down aliens with your souped up weapons, excessive ammo, just blazing through the game, laughing and joking whilst doing so. I mean, how different is that? It's not just a different game, that's a different genre. Now, this could be forgiven if you could play the game by yourself, which you could and yet you couldn't. On the single player version, you'd be progressing through dark corridors by yourself, but then suddenly a cutscene would trigger, and there's your teammate, Carver. He wasn't there before, but now he is. The cutscene ends, and he's gone. You see a distant ship with a side story that you want to explore, but the door's locked, unless you have your co-op partner. Often dialogue and cutscenes would play out like your teammate was there, but he wasn't. Often Carter would say things that had happened, which we'd experienced alone, and he shouldn't have been there to talk about it. 
A lot of the content was locked away in the single player mode, which led to a lot of plot holes and confusion in the story. Although the solo campaign was an option, it felt awkward and inferior, like it was not the main game, but just a lighter version of it. The game indirectly was telling you, I know you're playing it on one player, but you really should be playing it on co-op. The developers could have had different cutscenes depending on whether it was solo or a co-op adventure, but they just stuck with the same cutscenes. This indicates that the game was built as a co-op from the get-go, and single player option was an afterthought a inconvenience. So although the option was provided in theory, it wasn't really. Which, if you're understanding, was absolutely insane in a series that had earned its success and audience through isolating the player. It was a shock to say the least. So with these three massive changes, the audience that had loved the first two games was not in alignment with the third installment. They wanted survival horror, but what they got was something else just like Resident Evil, which had stormed to success with Resident Evil 4, but then introduced a mandatory co-op element in Resident Evil 5. Inevitably, they had garnered the same reaction with the fans of the Resident Evil franchise who did not align with the series that they'd come to love. That game also gave copious amounts of ammo and mainly focused on action. They gave the zombies of old, now they had miniguns, rocket launchers, and they set the game to be more action-y than survival horror. Then, in Resident Evil 6, they doubled down, and essentially just made a Gears of War Resident Evil style. Resident Evil 6 currently sits at 67% on Metacritic, by the way. It was almost a complete betrayal, not just to the fans, but it seemed to go against the developer's original vision. But the question is, why? The game was produced by Electronic Arts and developed by Visceral Game Studio. According to Chuck Beaver, who'd worked as the story producer for the original three Dead Space games, as well as some spin-offs, the game's problems stem from the fact that there were a limited number of people looking to play a single-player horror game at that time, and multiplayer was seen as a more profitable option by the publisher. So, to address this issue, the team wanted to bring more co-op elements and expand into other gameplay genres as well. Unfortunately, that didn't work. The team did not find a way to gain a new audience, and they lost the old one at the same time. Visceral Games, Dead Space's developer, originally had Dead Space 3 returning to its horror roots. It would be a slower paced, and it would incorporate more psychological horror elements into its gameplay. The plot would be similar to the John Carpenter film, The Thing, as a team of space marines grow paranoid with the surroundings, eventually turning on each other as the plot unfolds. EA didn't believe Viscarel's original concept was marketable enough, so it forced the developers to change its entire blueprint. The developers had to scrap most of the game's original narrative, while EA demanded features like co-op be implemented into the game. To make things worse, EA slashed Dead Space 3's budget. Viscarel had little say in the matter and they had to please Electronic Arts or they'd run the risk of getting the game cancelled altogether. With Dead Space 3 slowly morphing into a shell of its former self, Viscral had no choice but to make the best of what they had. Listen to the best-selling video games from these years. 2011, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, online game, co-op enabled. 2012, Call of Duty Black Ops 2, online game, co-op enabled. Then 2013, the year Dead Space 3 came out, Call of Duty Ghosts online game, co-op enabled. Electronic Arts saw the dollar signs, and like many game producers nowadays, they chased the money in following the current trend. They didn't care about the game's story, the experience, or even how it played, they wanted it to be monetized over everything. Co-op online games were making more money, so in an attempt to take some of that high grossing revenue, they morphed Dead Space into something it wasn't, and it didn't work. We see it happen all the time. Video games now are trying to emulate the free-to-play model in an attempt to catch up with games like Fortnite. They see the microtransactions and the success that game is receiving, and then they want to copy the exact same formula. The producers only see the dollar signs, and they ignore the art of video game creation. It's an afterthought. But what they haven't learned yet is that there can only be one Fortnite. There can only be one Minecraft. Many have tried to copy, and they've wasted the resources in doing so. 
Minecraft and Fortnite did not become as big and as successful as they are now by copying other games. They may have gained ideas from them, but they created their own features, their own brand, gameplay design, and that is what made them successful. The developers created what they knew and what they were passionate about, and that success followed after. Think of me making YouTube videos. I make these videos now because of the passion that I have for video games, with Dead Space being one of my favourite video games. As a result, I put my content first. I want to make great videos and give fans of the games some type of entertainment that they can enjoy and appreciate. Now imagine that I wanted to focus on the money first. Imagine if I built this entire video around just making money. I wouldn't do research, I would use clickbait thumbnails, look at what videos are going viral, I would steal their tags and keywords, I'd probably be making videos on TikTok, making them fast and quick trying to keep up with the trends. Now, not only would this make me miserable in doing that and betray everything that I believe in, but it wouldn't work. It would be a disaster and I would just receive a lot of criticism, a lot of negative feedback until I decided to quit. Just like what happened to the Dead Space franchise after the third installment. Electronic Arts did not own up to their mistakes by accepting that they got it wrong and giving Visceral Games another chance to do what they did so well before in passion. Nope. They just decided to cut the funding and they closed the whole operation down, destroying a franchise they did not cherish as much as the fans. If they had allowed Visceral Studios to stick to their vision, by now we would have had at least three more Dead Space games, and the irony is, they would have reached those financial targets that they were chasing back in 2013 when they released Dead Space 3. So to give you an example, Resident Evil 8 sold 8 million copies. If they had stuck to what was working, let time do its thing, Dead Space would be on par with that series right now. Resident Evil understood after negative feedback on Resident Evil 5 and 6, they decided to go back to their roots, releasing Resident Evil 7, which was a horror game through and through. Now they're reaping the rewards. That has 86% review on Metacritic, by the way. Unfortunately, we live in a world where publishers have the funds and so they get to make the final decisions, and we've seen so many other game studios go out of business because of this. They're a unwanted necessity. And this is why Dead Space 3 proved to be the final instalment in what up until that point had been such a successful franchise that was continuing to grow. But look, there's no need to end this video on a teary note, as this video does have a happy ending. First of all, Dead Space 3 was not a complete disaster. It isn't unplayable at all, and a lot of people, myself included, thoroughly enjoyed it. Not just that, but from the first three Dead Space games, there were spin-offs such as comics, mobile games, and other things, but they also created a dedicated fanbase who still hold the game in high esteem despite the last main game coming out over 10 years ago. I include myself among them. And then, the main part of the happy news, the Dead Space Remake. In complete contrast to the third game, the team who made the Dead Space Remake last year were huge Dead Space fans and they knew exactly what the fans wanted. They stuck to the formula that had made the first two games so successful and they brought the game back to life. It was everything fans had hoped and wanted, it scored 9 out of 10 on IGN, 89% on Metacritic and 5 out of 5 on Tech Radar. The game was shown love, and it shows that the demand for Dead Space franchise is still there. With talks of a Dead Space 2 remake on the way, surely it opens the door for the franchise to be resurrected one day, and the games that we know and love will come back to us. Resident Evil is a great example. They learned from the errors of chasing the money, and they turned it around. Visceral Studios were never given that chance, but the games that they have created will remain forever, and so will their fans. Anyway, that's it for this one. What do you guys think? Do you feel the same about Dead Space 3? Do you feel that the series is making a great comeback with the recently released remake? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing. I'm Av Gaming, and I do video game analysis and reviews, highlighting what makes great games great and what could make good games great too. I might be a small channel, but I am fully committed to this and I hope that you can join me for the ride. Thanks for watching, Av out.